Hey everyone, this is Rima's Culinary Adventures and today we are making bagels. Bagels are fairly new to me. I grew up in India and I didn't really grow up eating a lot of leavened bread but every time I've tasted bagels, they've always been so good. I only ever eat them every once in a while but I enjoy them every single time. So I thought that as a part of my weekly meal prep, I'm going to make some bagels and what better recipe to follow than Claire Sappitz's recipe. So I came across her recipe on NYT Cooking's YouTube channel and there she made these bagels. They looked lovely. They had these lovely blisters on the side. When she cut them open, they looked lovely and chewy. And she also shared some wonderful memories of her childhood. Overall, I really enjoyed watching that video. And since then, it's been on my mind to make them. So yeah, today I'm going to give them a shot and let's see how it goes. To prepare for this video, I have watched the video twice. I have downloaded the recipe off of NYT Cooking's website and procured all my ingredients, my head is all tied up, and now I'm ready to go. So let's begin. First, I start by measuring out my strong flour in my very tiny weighing scale. Don't be like me and please invest in a weighing scale that measures 3-5 to five kilograms worth of ingredients. This one only measures 500 grams and let me tell you what a pain it is to weigh out my ingredients. I've ordered another one and really a good weighing scale only costs about 10 pounds so it's absolutely worth the money. So I've weighed all of the flour I need and it's about six and a half cups. In the description box below I will add the link to the original recipe and the YouTube video so please follow along when you decide to make this recipe. With my flour measured now I'm weighing out my water. It's mildly warm to the touch and it's perfect to activate my yeast. I made a bit of a mistake here and dissolved my yeast and my molasses in all of the water. According to the recipe, I should have separated out some water and used that to activate my yeast. But spoiler alert, it made no difference in the end result. But I still suggest that you separate out a bit of your water and activate your yeast in that. Let me tell you why. This recipe calls for a lot of water. Exact amount in the link below. The amount of water isn't that big an issue if you are sure that your yeast is alive. But if you are looking to see the frothing and the bubbling to make sure that your yeast is alive, then all of this water can make all of those signs quite subtle and therefore it could throw you off. And also, what if you didn't need all of that water? Then some of the yeast wouldn't make it to the dough and the texture of the final product may suffer. Next, I mix in my salt with my flour and create a well for my liquid to go in. Then I add in most of my water just in case I don't need all of it and mix it in. Slowly, I incorporate most of my flour and soon realize that I need the rest of my water and so I add that in as well. I trust the process and I keep mixing it in, try and incorporate most of my flour into the water and trying to bring it together as a shaggy dough. But I soon realize that I may need a little bit more water. Maybe it's the gluten content of the flour I'm using. Here in the UK, we have strong flour instead of bread flour and it may be possible that it absorbs more water. I am using flour from a packet that's labeled very strong flour so it just may be that but it feels like it needs more water so I am kneading it in the bowl with my hands and it does feel dry. Then I pour out all of my dough and the rest of the flour onto my clean work surface and I start kneading it in. As you can see there's a lot of extra flour in there and I make an executive decision to add a little bit more water. I end up using about six tablespoons of water but that may be very different for you depending on the climate, depending on the brand of flour you're using. So proceed with caution and add what you feel is right for you. From NYT Cooking's video, I can tell that we are going for a dough that is just slightly tacky after we're done kneading it. Therefore, at this point, I'm looking to add just enough water to hydrate all of my flour. But at the same time, I don't want it too sticky because I do not want to then incorporate more flour into my dough. At this point, my dough looks right to me and I start kneading it for 15 minutes as prescribed by Claire on her YouTube video. I am one of those people that actually enjoys kneading dough. I find the process entirely therapeutic. I can absolutely zone out and get one with my thoughts while I let my hands do the work and bring the dough to its chewiest perfection. By the way, I find it really easy to knead the dough when I push the dough away from my body in opposite directions. So, as you can see on the video, my right hand is pushing the dough towards my left hand side and my right hand is pushing the dough towards the left. This allows my body to move very naturally 
and it is quite easy to apply the right amount of pressure to ensure that I can get maximum gluten development. At this point, I'm halfway there and I'm folding my dough to stretch my gluten strands and you can see it's springing back. So, so it's going well so far, but I still have a little more kneading to do. I'm going to continue kneading and then you'll see this get even better. In Claire's video, she says that at the end, we are looking for a dough that is slightly tacky, but not sticky. But you saw that I added more water to my dough and it's still not tacky. And I can tell that this will not be tacky in the end. This just goes on to show that different kinds of flour will absorb different amounts of water and we have to adjust accordingly. I have kneaded my dough for 15 whole minutes. I have enjoyed the process and I can tell that my dough has a lot of gluten developed. It's not tacky, but let me fold it onto itself and show you how wonderfully the gluten has developed. Look at that, the gluten strands are stretching so well. Let me bring it closer to the camera and show you how lovely and stretchy that is. I'm pressing it quite firmly and it is springing back almost immediately. And do you see the little blisters there? I think my bagels are going to turn out very well. It's really stretchy, the gluten is well developed, it is really springy and I'm getting really excited about it. Then I dust it off with some flour and then place it back in my bowl, cover it with some cling film and I let it proof for about one and a half hours. While my dough is proofing, I prepare two baking sheets. I place some parchment paper on top of them and then I grease them well with some flavorless oil and set them aside. Then I weigh all of the spices and sea salt except caraway to prepare my everything bagel topping and pour half of it onto a plate and then to the other plate I add some caraway seeds. I'm not a fan of caraway but I do want to experience an everything bagel as Claire intends in her recipe. With that done, it's time to check my dough. As you can see, it's doubled in size. I can see that it's proofed very well. It's taken me about one and a half hours. It's not a particularly cool day here today. I'm, I'm really happy with how it's turned out. Now I am deflating my dough a little bit and pulling it out onto my countertop. Now I'm punching it down. I'm knocking all the air out. Do you see how that bubble has come out of nowhere? That's a lot of air bubbles in there. I'm so excited about this. With my dough punched down, I'm ready to portion it out and shape my bagels basically. In the video, Claire says that each bagel weighs more than four ounces. The recipe in the website says that it should be about four and one third ounces, which works out to be about 125 grams. I tried that and I was disappointed because I was left with a very small amount of dough left for my last bagel. The weight of your dough may vary widely if you add more water or flour. So I think the best way would be to weigh out your dough and then divide it by 12 and then measure it accurately. Here's me crying out in frustration about my last two small bagels. I'm just gonna take a little dough from the rest of my bagels and make sure that they are mostly uniform, but next time I'm going to weigh out the entire bulk and then do it more accurately. Now, according to the recipe, I am folding the dough onto itself to form a shape like a little garlic or a little teardrop, and I intend to roll them into a tight little bowl so that the surface is entirely smooth and shaping is easy later on. Then with my hand like a claw, I shape it into a nice little ball. It's looking good so far. Let me tell you that this is a lot easier than it looks. You don't need extra flour, the dough does not stick and it just comes together with a few swift rotations. Once done, I cover them with a clean cloth for five minutes and I'm ready to shape them now. Then I shape each ball into a rope and then I apply extra pressure to ensure that the ends are tapered and then I wrap them around my hand and roll it onto the surface a little bit more to ensure that the ends are sealed and it comes together into a ring. This process takes a little getting used to because let's be honest, my ring is looking a little bit lumpy right now but it came around eventually. Also, there were times where my dough was resisting quite a bit. I just left the dough alone for five minutes or so, let the gluten relax and I came back to it within a few minutes. That said, I feel like it's it's also important to work fairly fast because as you can tell here, I have these little wrinkles on my dough. It's a little warm today and my dough is rising as I'm shaping them. So my guess is 
I'm squishing the air bubbles and creating these little wrinkles which may or may not result in cracks once I make my bagels. Anyone please let me know if I can leave them in the fridge while I shape them. These bagels are shaped and ready for the second proofing. I am covering them up with some cling film very lightly but I am pushing the edges down to ensure that there's no draft drying out my bagels. I'll cover them up with a wet towel and I'm placing them in the refrigerator for about four hours or so. So it's been a fun day it's been four hours i am doing the float test now i've taken a bagel and look how lovely is that it's floating wonderfully these bagels are proofed and they are ready to be boiled and baked off then i bring a bottle of water to boil and i add in my molasses i think i add about a quarter cup of molasses here but of course it depends on how much water you're using we want it to look like strong black tea then i add in my baking soda place the lid back on and bring my liquid to a boil. Skimming the froth on top as best as I can, I add in my bagels and boil them for about 20 seconds, turning them halfway through. I can see that they are swelling up slightly, which is exactly what we're hoping to see. Then I set them aside on a wire rack and let all the excess water drain off. Meanwhile, my oven is preheating with a rack in the middle. I intend to bake one tray of bagels at a time. The recipe says that we should be preheating our oven at 180 degrees Celsius, but I have a fan oven which gets really, really hot. And therefore I've accounted for that and I'm preheating my oven at 160 degrees Celsius. So with my bagels boiled and ready, I dress them with my toppings and place them on my baking sheet. And now they're all ready to go and get baked. According to the recipe, I should be baking them for about 20 to 25 minutes, turning the tray halfway through, but it's been about 18 minutes and my bagels are done. Look how lovely they are. I'm so pleased with them, but that one right there looks a little bit stuck to the pan. It could be my pan or it could be that my bagel was not drained properly. Something to learn right here. I'm going to just reuse my parchment paper, turn it around, make sure that the dry side is up and bake my bagels off on that. All of my bagels are baked and ready and I am so pleased. And check out those blisters right there. They look great. They look like the bagels on the video and I'm quite pleased about that. And that seam there makes it look even better. But do you see those cracks right there? I'm guessing they are because of the wrinkles that were forming when I was shaping them. I don't mind them at all. In fact, I think that it adds to its beauty. But, but to everyone who's watching, if you know how to avoid them, please let us know in the comment section box below so that we can all learn and make crack-free bagels in future. Another interesting observation from this experiment. I made a garlic bagel here and look how burnt the granules are. I read it somewhere that professional bakers soak their toppings to ensure that they don't burn. But I feel that that would reduce the shelf life and so it may not be the most appropriate trick for us home bakers who bake a batch to last a few days. That said, the bottom side looks less burnt. In fact, it looks completely okay. So I guess if you must make a garlic bagel, use it sparingly on the side that is in contact with your baking sheet so that it stays well protected and doesn't get burnt in the oven. Look at that lovely and chewy you can tell this is going to be a great bagel i'm really looking forward to eating this so i do the most logical thing and top my bagel with lots and lots of cream cheese with smoked salmon onions dill and i'm ready to eat so it's been a day well spent making these delicious bagels um i really enjoyed it i particularly like kneading the dough. I really enjoy that process. What can I say? It's quite therapeutic. So there's nothing much left to do besides eating this delicious thing for dinner. And let's see how we did. It's chewy and I know bad chewy because I've made breads that I'm not proud of. They are dense, they stick in your throat. This is delicious. This is chewy. It's got a lovely bite. It's crusty and it's just a great piece of bread really i mean this is bread that i'd like to dunk in a nice creamy soup in fact this reminds me of this restaurant back in india where they would hollow out this lovely loaf of crusty bread and they would serve leek and potato soup inside this is bread that takes me back to that i mean this is great bread so good so good so yeah the final outcome of this whole project is that I can make great bagels at home. It is not as intimidating as you would think. And I agree with Claire, this is perfect for people who wanted to make sourdough but gave it up because it felt intimidating. Do I like it? I absolutely love it. Would I make it again? 
a hundred percent so if you enjoyed this video give it a thumbs up share and subscribe and join me in my next adventure bye